Dear students, in this module we will see how to enumerate all the possible two prime structures that can be formed out of the nucleotide sequence of an RNA. As you know, RNA compo is composed of one prime structure that is the sequence, the two prime structure, the hairpin loops and bulges, and three prime that is the tertiary structure. So given a one prime structure, how do you uh, look at the, all the possibilities? We need to do this because the experimental apparatuses to determine the RNA structure are extremely expensive and the process itself is extremely slow as well. However, given that we need to predict the two prime structures, the problem is not simple as well because there are too many possibilities that exist. If we were to successfully determine the two prime structure of an RNA molecule, we ne really need to list down all of the two prime possibilities and then select the optimal one. So the important thing now is how do we list down all such possibilities? For that we have to find each and every one of them and then be able to list them down to, towards comparing them. The strategy to undertake this task is the dot plot. To make a dot plot, you need to just have the one prime structure of the RNA molecule, that is the sequence, and then you draw a circle, you draw a square, and then you partition it by drawing grid lines. You put the RNA sequence on top and the left side of your square, and then you just connect each complementary nucleotide with a dot. That's why it's called a dot plot. Okay. So to give you a demonstration, here is your square that you need to start with. And of course you can see there are these grid lines that have been drawn for you. Next, you have to place the nucleotide sequence on top and on the left side. So here you have the nucleotide sequence on top and the same sequence has to be put on the right side. The important thing is the orientation that is written here, five prime end till the three prime end, and similarly, five prime end till the three prime end. In the next step, what you have to do is to connect the nucleotides that are complementary to each other. So you find out which nucleotide is complementary. As you can see, G is complementary to C. So you simply put a dot in the grid. Next, you find out that this G is also complementary with this C. Therefore, you also put a dot here. You move on and you scan the second nucleotide A on the right side. It is complementary to U as shown here. Therefore, you put a dot here as well. You scan again and you find out that A is also complementary to this U and therefore you have another dot. In this way, you keep scanning each nucleotide and you try to find its complementary nucleotide in the strand. In this case, C was complementary to this G, this G, and this G as well. So you have three dots in your plot. So upon completing the exercise for all nucleotides like that, you will be able to see the nucleotides that are complementary to each other and fill up the entire square. After looking at this square, one can easily know what is the length of the complementary sequence at which nucleotide in the corresponding portion of the RNA molecule. For instance, here you have three continuous matches between G, U and C and G, A and C here. Similarly, you can take a look at this one, three continuous complementary nucleotide pairings. For G, U, C and 
C A G. So once you have identified the longest runs in the dot plot, you can actually find out the secondary structure that is plausible. From your textbook, there is an example of the potato tuber spindle viroid and the RNA, 2 prime RNA structure prediction using the dot plot. And of course, you can see there are long streaks within this plot which represent the possibility of the two prime structures that can be predicted. So, given a dot plot, all you have to do is to form the longest chain along the diagonal and that will be the best two prime structure that can be reported. But if the situation is like that, you have two or more uh, equally length uh, two prime structures, then you may want to look at the gaps, which will be essentially present in the form of loops and you want to reduce them to as little as possible. You must note that the destabilizing effect is not considered in a dot plot.